This episode of the IMEO TV show is sponsored by Pass and Nora Gibbons, Chicago and Mayo. Ballantubber GA Club has been a major performer on the Mayo scene since its inception. It has supplied many stalwarts and indeed legends to county teams over the years. Paddy Prendergast's story begins right here in his native Ballantubber, where he first launched his footballing career. He moved to Donegal where he was stationed as a member of Angarda Siakana, donning the yellow and green before being requested to play for his native county of Mayo. I came to Donegal in, in, in 46, wasn't it? 46, And then, and, 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 and it was 47, really. Mm -hmm. And then I had this letter from Liam Hastings. Uh, uh, Mayo had decided that our time has come, you know, this, we were in the wilderness for, for so many years and uh, had won nothing. But suddenly they, they thought that we had a chance of going somewhere and that time you had to declare for the county. And there was chance. In 1950 and 1951, Paddy Prendergast was part of the All-Ireland winning Mayo football teams. Regarded as the most spectacular fullback of his generation, Henry McGlade has travelled to Trillian County, Kerry, to meet Paddy Prendergast, and he began by asking him about his involvement with the 1950 squad. We were, constant, we were all in Mrs. Gaws, and we were playing football every day. And uh, then we, we played, and we were playing ordinary football, you know, kicking back and over. And then the match, the match was on at four o'clock or whatever, and uh, you know it, it was it was it was very serious. Mm. You weren't going to show yourself as being weak or, mm. or being being uh, defeatable or anything, you know. So, mm. Because it was part of your life. Yes. It was very much part of your life actually, and the fellows who were who were close friends afterwards, they were on the team. The likes of Flanagan and Co. You know, Mixer and Sean and. And it was, it was a very close knit unit, as our team, mm. very, very close. Mm. A, a very, very good friends. And the friendship, I'd say, lasted a lifetime, you know, mm. with, in most cases. Yes, they, were, they were a great bunch of lads. Mm -hmm. There's no two ways about it. I don't know if we ever appreciate how good they were, you know. Yes. Langan and, 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 and company and Flanagan. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you often look back at those days, Paddy? <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't actually. Well, I do if, if I meet somebody who somebody knows, friends, uh, yes, who knew yes, about yes, or, yes. or saw some of the games, mm. or knew the lads I played with. Mm. Uh, uh, we, we definitely would, 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 would talk a lot about it. But Jesus, you know, when I think of it, and I, I think of it occasionally, you know, comparing them, if you like, with, with some of the present day fellas. There's, there's some great players among them, you know. Lang was a great player. Mm. Flanagan was a great yeah, player, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and um, many others, Mixer, Monkey, you know. Yeah. They were, and they were totally, committed. totally committed. After you won the All Ireland, what was it like going back to Ballantubber after that? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're on a high. I mean, so you were a hero in Ballantubber. Huh? You were a big star in Ballantubber. I was. <laughs> no, not. I, I wasn't saying oh, that they, they made me too big a star at all in Ballantubber. You know, it was great. And people, I mean, so people cycled to Croke Park. I know. From, from Mulroney and from Foxford and from all over the place, you know. From Ackill. And from Ackill. You're quite right, Sean. Yeah. Extraordinary. And she's, can you imagine their joy? Mm. When they, yeah. It was worth the cycle and the walk. Coming out of Croke Park after winning, you know, they were seven foot high. Yeah, and having to cycle all the way back home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, the, 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 the support was, was wonderful. Yeah. Like the previous time was 36, when Jackie Carney was still, Jackie Carney was playing then, and, mm. and Corrells and all those, that was 36. And Jackie Carney is still now there with us and Gerald Correll and some of the others who were, who were, um, who were there in 36, who were involved with us. Actually, it was a different world, you know. Sure, yeah. It was. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was remarkable. Well, it's, it's a remarkable story, Paddy. It's a remarkable story. Well, I think that, 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 that they were extraordinary, really, yeah. the fellas who, who, 
who brought us that far, you know. Hedy, would you have any advice for modern day footballers now? I suppose, you know, they, they say, the, probably the most important thing is the game. The game is the most important thing. Yeah, so get about the, the opposition, you go to get involved and, and stay away from the elbows and from all, all, all the strikers, you know. Play the game. Play the game. You play the game. Good note to finish on. And, and, if you, and if you have 15 fellas playing the game, as you know, Tony, yeah. playing at their best, they're, 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 some, they're some bunch, you know. Yeah. Paddy Prendergast recalling some of his fond memories. Well, while we were here in Trillian at the home of Paddy's, we took the opportunity to talk to Paddy's wife, Irene, who is originally from Germany and who recalls some of the great memories, including the first time she met Paddy at a dance in Ballybunion. I came to Ireland in 59 to Cork for a year and I got an offer from a German firm to come to Trali as management. So I came and I went back to Germany in 64 and in the meantime I um, met Paddy and it was very funny actually. Uh, there was only the Benes Hotel was the hotel and on a Thursday you would go there because they had lovely pork. So I would go and then Paddy would be always around the lunchtime and he would go talk to people and I would say to a friend of mine, he was a German, who is this performer there? Everybody went to Billy Bonnie dancing. So he was there and he asked me to dance and I danced with him and I was driving a Volkswagen. So he was saying, oh, can you give me a lift to Trali? I said, no, I can't. I have four more ladies in my car. And if you start walking now, you will be in the morning in Trali. Would not be nice. So anyway, after a few weeks, he, I got a phone call from him if I go fishing with him. So fine, I went fishing with him. And on a lake in the evening, I was eaten by Mitch's. So we went afterwards for a drink in Ennis Call and they were talking about football. I said, did you play football? Ah, yeah, he said, you know, a little bit. And so anyway, after a while we went out and, and we got married in Germany and friends here from Trali was the only Irish couple, came to wedding. And uh, of course I have the three kids and one is in Santiago, Mark, the youngest, the boy, the what, what you call, Willie all called him, the golden boy. <laughs> and Siobhan is in London and Petra in the moment in South Africa. So th there's, there's three siblings, P Petra, uh, Siobhan and Mark. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I'm only standing in for them, you know, they'd all love to be here. Mark yeah. is in is in San Diego, so, yeah. Siobhan is in London and as I said, Petra is in... Is in um, is in South Africa. Uh, South Africa. But uh, the two All-Ireland medals, interesting, and actually Mark has a lot of memorabilia in his pub. It's called Stout in San Diego. It's a really successful, mm. he's done a great job. He's worked hard for So the two medals, uh, Pat this is Petra's medal. This is the 1951 medal. So Paddy gave it to Petra and Siobhan has the 1950 medal. And then these are five, five of the Connacht uh, Championship medals. I think it's 48, 49, 50, 51, and I think maybe 53. But they're beautiful. I mean, it's the kids love to see them, back to your original question. So yeah. we've got great photos of the boys, you know, when they were little fellas holding up the medals, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they do appreciate the significance of Paddy, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, well, first of all, of Mayo football. And like the, the All-Ireland medal is so beautiful as well. Like when you look at the detail on the medal, lovely to have, isn't it? Tony O'Connor is chairman of Ballantubber GEA Club. Our association with Paddy goes back many, many years and, uh, you know, it's a privilege uh, and a great honour for me as chairman of the club to be down here in Tralee celebrating a very special occasion. Seventy years ago, this weekend, to have our own club man, our own neighbour, 
our own relation, in fact, this in relation, um, hail and hearty, and telling so many stories, Those and the days, fun, yeah. and the crack that you have with Paddy, I mean, this is what brings us down to Tralee. We love coming to Kerry, and it is something special to visit the likes of Paddy Pranigas and his good wife Irene and the family to celebrate, enjoy, make the most of every day. We actually love coming to Tralee and love coming to Binners. When Mayo play in Killarney, we stay here. We visit Paddy and his friends down here. There is, you know, Henry, there is a little Mayo mafia down here, yeah. you know, on here. <laughs> the likes of John Early and Johnny Lyons and, the, you know, Penny uh, Joyce and those people. And I suppose the Don Corleone of the whole lot of them is, is Paddy P. We're here now, as you said, to mark the very first occasion, 70th anniversary of that great win, Mayo against yeah. Slough of 1950. And, of course, Paddy Prendergast, one of the yeah, legends. Yeah, uh, the legend. You have a special presentation for him tonight. Yeah, I must say, Henry, now, it's an honour and a privilege, a special privilege for me, on behalf of all of the people in Ballantubber, to just present a simple token of a club tie to our own legend. And a legend he is, go down in folklore, you know, uh, the, our legend, the greatest fullback probably of all time, fullback in the Mayo team in 1950 and 51. So I, it's a privilege as a, and an honour, I'm going to present Paddy Prendergast with this club tie. So maybe Paddy, yeah. if you will join me here, Paddy. Paddy, it's a great honour for me as chairman of Ballantubber GA Club, and a privilege indeed to present you with a small little token of what you mean to our club. You know, you're an icon in Ballantubber, you're an icon in Mayo, and I hope that you wear it for another 40 years, Paddy. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank there you. you are, there you are, Paddy. We're here to honour Paddy Prendergast tonight here yeah. to me. And it's very personal for you because you come from the same village as his family and your family would have grown up together. Yeah, we grew up in the, in the same village. I, I, I remember I was only very young when Mayo won the 1950 All-Ireland final, but uh, Paddy was a legend at that stage. He was the personality uh, in, in the village and we were very proud of him. And uh, uh, my dad used to go feeding the cattle every day and he'd drop into the Prendergast and the two sets of Prendergast and the Meanhans and, and the O'Connors, he'd visit them all on, on, on route. So that was the lifestyle that, that we had at the time. And football was a big topic and the achievements of Paddy Prendergast we're tying um, the list. Would that have influenced you in getting involved in the GA locally? Oh, it had a big influence. I mean, when you have a, a hero like you know, Paddy was in the, in the 50s, like when you were growing up, there wasn't much more to be doing at the time when they playing football. And we used to look forward to, to going down to uh, Tom Prendergast Field and kicking the ball uh, there when I was growing up. We, 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 it was only a makeshift field, but it was still nice to be able to have that opportunity. I remember that one of the first games, 1950 and 51, when Paddy was playing, and hearing me hollow hair describing, and so forth. So you had an image even at that stage, and then getting to know Paddy here in later life, and whatever about his football prowess or anything else, he was always I'd describe him as Faro's little guy. Look, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that I think that's more important than any wins or losses or anything else to be that, you know. Yeah, you've always said, like, with all the medals you won, you know, your yeah. All-Stars, all Ireland yeah. medals and that, that um, it's more about that as well, isn't it? They're a great family, the GA, yeah. and, and you make great friends. Yeah, that That's was most important. important. To you. And I think what it has done for the people of Ireland, and again, going back to Mayo, one All-Ireland that we're playing in recently, maybe in the past 20 years or something, being in Dublin, and in, in hotels, there were so many Mayo people are, are Mayo descent from other countries, especially the United States. And Noel, being the first kind of Kerry man to get an all-star, it must have been a very proud moment for you. I suppose it was. It was indeed, yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> about that. It, 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 it was, yeah, but it's, I suppose essentially it's a team game. Yes. And if you, if you get awards like that, other people had to be backing you up as well and playing with you, and you, you get the breaks. Or, and as well as that, there was a, a, a very good prize going that time. There was a trip to San Francisco in the middle of winter. 
which was a big bonus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When the sun, where the sun was shining. But the game has changed an awful lot from your days, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Would you like to be playing? Uh, and not that much, you know, in our time, from Paddy's and time, our youth, you, you know, be very but similar, yeah. yeah, but yeah. It, it has changed. If you Paddy would, would probably agree with that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I wouldn't because I think there's, there's so much emphasis on running mm -hmm. and this passing the whole time, you know. It's just changed dramatically. Kicking it 50 yards, well, they'll tell you that's an old folk talking of one of the old folks, so they, they, they won't listen to that yet. It's important for you to be here for Paddy Prendergast yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's important for all the memories, you know, people we talk, we've met so many more and do work with, but especially for Paddy, it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, together, it's the common bond was the Gated Athletic Association. Mm -hmm. And whether you're Mayo, Donegal, or Kerry, or West Cork, and so on, it's, yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I suppose that I left, I left Lewisburg in 1967 and I went to Templemore where I joined the cars. I went to Sligo then on, in August the same year and I stayed there. I had 13 of my best years of my life were in Sligo. I went there as a 20 year old of course and single and all that kind of crack. It was very good. You know? Did you play football at that time? I did. I played football in, in, uh, in Sligo. You know? I came here in May 1980 so I was only here a few days when uh, one of my colleagues, he said, I'll take you out to see, to meet a man, a great Mayo man here, uh, Paddy Prendergast. I didn't even realise that Paddy was in Tralee at the time. So I came out anyhow, out to Paddy. Paddy was flat out doing nothing when we, when we arrived out, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so um, it was love at first sight, I'd say, between myself and Paddy. Yeah. And and we're being lifelong friends. Lifelong friends, yeah, yeah. everything. You, you, you're very close to Paddy and of course you're kind of a, a driver for him as well. You, you travel together for yeah. matches and for other occasions. Oh yeah, we have, yeah, we have travelled all over the country, yeah. all over the country in, in the last number of years with um, Paddy, John Early, Denny Long, the late Miles Gibbons, brother of John Gibbons, John the played with Mayo. Uh, we travel all over, all over Ireland, up and down. You must but, remember some great stories. Oh, we had some, we had some wonderful stories. But all those trips, you know, that we made up and down the country, uh, we always ended up in, in Adair, in, in Collins' pub in Adair. That was part of it. And it was unbelievable, really, you know, the locals, if Mayo were playing, the locals would out and come into the pub about six o'clock. They'd say the Mayo crew will be arriving, you know. And we, we would, we'd normally be coming back around six or seven. And sometimes we wouldn't have the car stop from Paddy be out, you know, going in. And otherwise, other times we, we might be in before him and they'd say, is he witchy? There's no name, is he witchy? So <laughs> they are not, yeah. But they thought so much of him, like he was a legend, you know. And, and I must say that Paddy's loved here in Kerry. He's loved in Kerry, you know, they're all, they're mad about him. I suppose back in the early 70s, I met Paddy for the first time after some club game here in Tralee or Killarney, I can't remember now and uh, kept in contact, but not very much. But over the last 25 years, with the help of Paddy Joyce and John Early and uh, the late Miles Gibbons, we traveled. To, I became a kind of a half a mayor supporter. <laughs> and uh, we traveled everywhere. We had some great times. But I suppose, you know, Paddy was the life and soul of our, our day out, really, because, you know, there's a car radio in every car but you could turn off the radio once Paddy sat in because Paddy took over. <laughs> and we heard, you know, the most yeah. amazing stories from yeah. when Paddy was in, a young man in Ballantubber, right up to the time he was in Donegal and calling around to schools and doing all the things that a very good footballer in those <laughs> days did. <laughs> and obviously he was very popular. And uh, we had some great times. And mm. I suppose like Donny said earlier on there, the thing, that strikes me most about Petty P is that uh, you meet Petty P and there's something special about him. And I'm not just saying that because we're here tonight. He, you know, I tell the story about my wife uh, has no interest in football. She wouldn't know one footballer from the other. And we happened to be at uh, uh, something and I picked up Petty and we traveled 40 miles and I can't remember exactly what it was now and Paddy was talking and talking, we were talking football, football. So on the journey back, 
my wife was in the back of the car and she had a few words with Paddy now and then when she got a chance and she said to Paddy, Paddy, you have fierce interest in the football. Did you play yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Paddy wasn't a bit insulted. He, he took it in great humour and, you know, things like that I remember. But, you know, yeah. Paddy's a gentleman to the... And, and then you've had your own success on the field as well over the years, haven't you? Yeah, yes. And a couple of titles as well. Yes. Tell us about some of them. Yeah, yes, I, I, I suppose really it's like most people will tell you the Jays, you know, made a lot of us and uh, we owe it a lot and uh, I really enjoyed every minute of it. And if you're lucky enough to play it into county level, that's a plus. An awful lot of fellas don't get that. Mm that day out and, you know, if you're lucky enough to win a few medals or whatever. But I think it's more to the people that you meet and the people you come across. And it makes you a better person and it gives you a great outlook in life. And uh, I think you can, you know, whereas you might be held in a small bit higher than, than most people that didn't play at that level. But still, I think that, you know, some great days and, and some great memories, but, you know, it comes and goes and you enjoy it while it is there. I remember, I suppose, the last story I, I, I would tell when, when I was a young fella at home and there was a fella and he was much smaller than me. We were both small, but he was a lot smaller than me and we'd be down the field kicking football and there might be 10 fellas out 30 yards and the other, there'd be seven or eight in around the square. And if you remember the pitches that time, the square was all sand and they were, the sod was gone off it, you see. But this fella, small John, we used to call him, and he was calling himself Paddy Prendergast. So when the ball would be coming in, you see, he'd be going for it. He had no chance of getting it, like he was too small. But then he'd say, he'd draw a line across the goals, and he'd say, any fella comes inside this, Paddy Prendergast will deal with him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first memory of Paddy Pr I had the clue who he was, but this fella knew him, and that was, that, that's the way it was. <laughs> that sums us up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dilly, thanks. Lovely to have you on the program. Thank Thanks you. very much. Tonight, history was made in the kingdom when Ballantubber GA hosted the first ever club lotto outside the county. And who better to pull the winning ticket than football legend himself, Paddy Prendergast. While president of the Mayo GA County Board, Sean Feeney presented Paddy with Mayo Crystal. 70 years later, Paddy still longs for the day that he will see Sam Maguire coming back to Mayo. His passion and his pride in the red and green is still as strong as ever, as we found out at a recent social gathering in Hughes's pub Carnicon, where Paddy sang one of his favourite all-time songs, The West Awake. Alas and well may hear and weep that Connacht lies in slumber deep. Their lakes and plains smile fair and free, may the rocks their guard in chivalry. Sing, oh, let man learn liberty from crashing wind and lashing sea. And often in O'Connor's van, to triumph dash each Connacht clan and flee as dear the Normans ran through Carlos Pass and Ardrahan and later time saw deeds as brave and a glory guard clan Rickard's grave sing oh they die their land to save on Nahrim slopes and the Shannon with This episode of the IMEO TV show is sponsored by Pass and Nora Gibbons, Chicago and Mayo.